I've been hearing that as well that 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 the Oklahoma City Thunder have been really infatuated with the athleticism and the potential of pairing a, a player like Jaden Ivey with Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, there was a there was a reporter out here, James Ham. He covers the Sacramento Kings closely. He's the Kings insider here, and you know he even came out and said that the word coming out of the combine was there's a potential already deal in place that he's heard and rumored about. Like obviously it's not done. But that the Kings, like you said, are potentially looking at number two. If they're going to number two, do you think it's because they have their eyes set on a guy like Jabari Smith? Because I feel like that would be the person that they should go for if they moved up. Or it's any one of the three could help the Kings right now, right away. It's a forward that can shoot or it's a forward that can defend. Yeah, I think any one can help three. I think they have to do their due diligence on all of those guys. But also be kind of interesting because without a deal in place, you know, is, are you going to be able to even get Jabari in for a workout? Because, you know, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm representing Jabari Smith and I think that he's going to go no lower than two, then, you know, is it worth a Sacramento workout? Unless, you know, you, you feel like very, you feel, unless you feel very strong that there there is a deal that, that can be worked out. Because a lot of times guys that are projected to go, number one only work out for the team that's number one Mm -hmm. or or number two so um but yeah i mean i i think sacramento i think it would be wise to try to move up i don't know which is their guy i mean i'm I'm a bancaro guy myself me too i'm I'm a huge bancaro guy so i don't know if that's their guy or maybe you know they want jabari smith to come in and follow Steps, who who also played for the Kings, and then maybe they like Chet. Chet is going to sell tickets. Chet is going to be someone that, you know, he's going to be divisive. There are people that really like him, and there are people that just are so anti-Chet that he's going to be popular either way because people are going to be checking him out to see, you know, if he's great, or people are going to be checking him out to see if they're right because they have the whole "I told you so," "I told you he 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 wasn't good." So, um. Yeah, I mean, but I, I would try to move up if I was Sacramento. Yeah, I mean, of the three, I think in the – of the three, I think it's Chet that is definitely the biggest question mark just because of that 195 frame. But talent-wise, I, f- I feel like he has the whole package that you want in a big man. I just feel like it's a – what, a, a, maybe a year red shirt him just to gain some a little bit of weight. I mean, to be 15 pounds – Le- less than even an Evan Mobley, I feel like is a little bit of a red flag in my eyes just because he is going to be playing down on the block against guys like Jokic. I don't even think of that big. Like, try seeing him guard a guy like Paul Millsap. That size bumping into you is going to be – I would love to see how he absorbs that because it, in college it seems he absorbed contact just to get the block, you know, and that would be a big way for him to to stay in there. I heard someone say that he defends kind of like a Nemanja Bialica where he'll just let let someone come into him just because he has the length to block over. I find that to be a little interesting. It's just, yeah, that, that 195 frame at, at seven feet tall. How concerned are you about that at the next level? Yeah, I'm worried about, like, the duck-ins. You yeah. know, like a guy, it, it may not necessarily be one-on-one, but if it's like a play where a guy is going from – you know, let's say he's going from the left block to the right block, and all he's doing is just kind of ducking in. I don't know if he has the strength to be able to prevent the ducking. Then once a guy kind of establishes low post position, it's hard to stop anybody. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I do think that he can defend in space, which kind of helps him out, but it's just if he if he is like – Going against somebody, even for guys like it's Jonas Valanciunas, even like a Steven Adams, I, I don't think those guys will have any issues establishing low post position against him. He could be a guy that makes really good defensive plays, but he also could be targeted on multiple possessions because of his, his lack of bulk and lack of strength. So um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how, how it, it works out. I think it's, I mean, I think he's going to go top three. But I, th- I think that that he's going to struggle initially early in his career. And it's going to take a patient fan base, in my opinion. Yeah, 